Let's come to the leader of the SNP, Ian Blackford. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and I congratulate the new Prime Minister on becoming the first British Asian to hold the office. The significance and the symbolism of this achievement is to be warmly welcomed by everyone. Yeah. Mr Speaker, yesterday on the steps of Downing Street, the new Prime Minister promised to bring, and I quote, compassion to the challenges that we face today. So, on his first full day in the job, let's put that to the test. A winter of uncertainty is coming, and next April we'll see a cliff-edge moment. Millions face a double whammy as the energy price guarantee is cut off, while households are hit by austerity 2.0 and a real terms cut to social security benefits that many rely on to survive. If people are actually to trust the new Prime Minister's words about compassion, will he today reassure people and guarantee that benefits will rise in line with inflation yeah, yeah. in his upcoming budget? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mr Speaker, I thank the Royal Gentleman for his, uh, again, kind, kind remarks. And what I can tell him is my record on this is clear. Through the difficult times that we faced in this country yeah, yeah. through COVID, I always acted in a way to protect the most vulnerable. That's because it is the right thing to do, and those are the values of our compassionate party. And I can absolutely reassure him and give him that commitment that we will continue to act like that in the weeks ahead. Ian Blackford. Well, Mr Speaker, let's test that, because as Chancellor, the Prime Minister slashed universal credit and presided over the worst ever... For the hard of hearing on the Tory side, I might remind them that universal credit was cut by £20 a week and presided over the worst levels of poverty in North West Europe. So I hope that he has learned from his mistakes and guarantees that benefits will rise in line with inflation. But speaking of mistakes, yesterday the Prime Minister appointed a Home Secretary who was forced to resign only last week for breaching the ministerial code and who boasted, boasted that she dreamed of sending vulnerable asylum seekers to Rwanda. We all know why he appointed her a sleazy backroom deal to shore up his own position. Far from being a fresh start, this is a return to the sleaze and scandal and ghosts of Cabinet's past. The Prime Minister promised to govern with integrity and humility. So if he has a ounce of either, will he admit his mistake and sack the Home Secretary sack without the delay. Yeah. Uh, Mr Speaker, I was pleased to actually have a call last night with the First Minister of Scotland. It was important that I spoke to her on my first day in office because I wanted to express my desire to work constructively with the Scottish Government so that we can work together to deliver for the people of Scotland, and that is what I plan to do. And indeed, I hope crime is one of the things that we can collaborate on because he will know that violent crime is rising in Scotland and police numbers are falling. Whereas here, we are increasing police numbers, Mr Speaker. But I look forward, I look forward to working with the Scottish Government on our shared challenges because I believe in a strong United Kingdom. Yeah.